Well, let's have a jive around this model in Revit 2021. It's a structural project, so just the structural documentation of this proposed apartment. And what we're going to focus on is filters and how you can use those. So filters, uh, for me, are my preferred way of uh, hiding and changing the look of things. So let's have a look at this model here. You've got the shoring wall here, so we've got some basements underneath, or one basement underneath, and we've got a shoring wall. So looking at a shoring elevation, I have things that you want to show different to others, or things you want to pop and things you want to make light. So a lot of that is controlled by filters. So to get to filters, you can go to View, Visibility Graphics, or as it says there, VG. Just type in VG, and you get the Visibility Graphics, and then there's a Filters tab. So what type of things have I got on this filter? Well, I've got uh, sections. So if sections, family type equals shoring cross sections. That's hidden, that's actually turned off. I don't want those to show up. Now I have anything that's, um, the type name has a block in it. I do have an override there to change the hatch and the transparency, but I think on this one, actual view, there isn't any block. Now, of course, I still use work sets, but I use work sets as they're intended to, um, to isolate key, key areas for you. And particularly, you've got to be careful with using work sets for turning things off and on, because when you send that to someone else to coordinate with, that can make it difficult for them if you've got a lot of work sets. So I keep work sets pretty sim simple. So I've got a work set for the slab on ground. Uh, there is a work set for the footings. I'm not sure if I actually used that for this project, but I definitely use this one, work set, primary work set. That's just where just about everything is drawn. And as you can see, those three work set, sets there, I have made the patterns hidden, projection patterns, and the cut patterns, and I've made the line work just slightly gray and a light color, and it's, trans, and it's transparent. So it doesn't dominate because uh, shoring, well, this shoring element, say for that pile there, is on a shoring work set. And that makes it really great too. If you coordinate with the project, you can with someone else, you, you can have just the shoring there on one work set. So all those elements for the early works are there. Now back to my filters again, VG filters. I've got uh, site topo, so a topographical site. I've got two in there. I've got the natural surface, which is created from the contours that were shown on the architect's drawing. And then where the geotech believes that the rock is normally two meters below the ground of the existing. So I've just copied that surface down and we have a look at interrogate that object for a minute. If I can just grab it. Into... Let's just grab the top one. Uh, it has a name in there called uh, name reference natural surface and the other one if I can grab it is well it's got a material weathered shale that's the type of rock but it's got the name as weathered shale too so that name that that's a key point there so when you're back in the visibility graphics and filters I have uh, the site topo, I have overridden the cut view of that so it has that dark pop out look. Yeah, so that, that's how I've changed those things. Now one thing I just noticed recently, I've never noticed this before, but I know, well I've seen these buttons but I've never done anything with them. But if you don't have them in the right order it can, can affect the view. So that topographic surface is on primary work set, work, uh, the primary work set work set. So if I move it down like that, notice what happens, it almost disappears, it just becomes a light line because it's taking on the attributes of that filter. So I've just got to move that up and then it's okay. Now you might be asking, well how do I make that view look like that with the shade and the pile and everything? Well that's controlled down here. I have the visibility, that one set, which what whatever that was, shaded with edges. And of course, you can uh, override individual elements or categories, sorry, model categories in here. So I do have topographic at 
transparency for that view. And look, that looks like I've, the only thing I've done in the view graphics for that. So most of the controls are in the filters to get that view. So if we look over at the primary work set there, you can see that just about everything's drawn on that, on that uh, work set. Now just to show you the first floor plan here, so that's a, a steel frame with timber joist infill. I've used filters in here quite extensively too. So first of all, I have modeled things in for that I don't need structurally for a placeholder. So they did model the 19 mil yellow tongue flooring and I have put a filter on that to make it really light, light lines. And that's just a great little reference. And the reason mostly for that is around the stairs here that you can, oh, you can see there is a penetration through the floor there. So it's just a good, good reference there. So just go VG again, look at the other filters. So that was one. So once again, I've got all the shoring sec sections. If they, in, in this case, if it's, if it's a family and type that says shoring elevations, just please just turn that off. I don't want to see those again, or I don't want them exported. Now, one little trick I've done here is see this one, it says wall locations, first floor stud walls, which is a rule, a wall based one. So you've got uh, walls and this is a special locations. Now that's a bit of a trick and I'll show you, I'll show you how, what I've done there is that I've actually added a shared parameter to a lot of the family so I can put custom information and I can use in my filters and also my schedules. So for the walls that are above first floor, which are basically non-structural, I have turned those off. So if I turn that one on now, you'll see what happens. See all the first floor walls are showing up, but I don't need this on the plan. It just makes it confusing for that structural plan. So I've controlled that visibility through the filters. So it's one place I can toggle it on and off if I need it. So that's a great use of filters. Now the other one too, I've got uh, on the family names here, I've got wall stud and wall brick veneer. So if you edit, if I edit that one, it's once again, it's just walls and anything with the type name that contains stud, I've got control over and this one's similar, but anything with the type name brick veneer. So the external wall is a 90 stud plus a cavity, a 110 brick veneer. So that text is there, so that picks it up in the filter. And if you look at the internal walls, which are below this level, I'll just grab one of those. There's the word stud in the name there. So that controls filters. So key takeaways. Use filters more for controlling visibility of elements, turning things on and off, making them lighter, changing the hatching, and um, generally uh, an, a way to control the way your drawings look. What I would strongly recommend is that you never just do something like this where you go, uh, I'm going to overwrite graphics and view by element because you can get quite a messy situation when you have changes and try to edit those later on.